The Vampire Counts and Warriors of Chaos have both been around since day one of the trilogy some seven years ago, and while lots has changed for both factions, one thing has remained true for the vast majority of that time span. Armored Northmen struggled with undead. They struggled with healing blobs, with terror, with the numberless slavering hordes of the Krets. But perhaps no longer. Harry the Hammer, the mighty Herald Hammerstorm, is the bane of the undead, and in this video, we're going to show off his power in a disgusting blob build that plays exactly how you'd expect the Vampire Counts to. If you can't beat him, join him. So if your plan is undead against the Warriors of Chaos, there are a few ways to approach your army composition. But one thing always remains true, you want a lot of Crypt Horse. Like many units in Game 3, they benefited tremendously from percentage-based healing, to the point that they are a dominant choice in just about every game mode. They got buffed out the ass, and since the release of Immortal Empires, they've been double-cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon and every Thursday since. The Red Duke will be leading a regiment of Blood Knights into battle, El Safe being a fantastic dueling diva for use against Harry or Festus. They're going to have a lot on their plate in this one. They have quite the load to carry. I'm playing against Hadris here, a scary opponent indeed. I told him before the battle, just bring the filthiest, most degenerate counter undead army you can think of. This is what he concocted, a most potent brew from Festus Leechlord, double chaos giant, and of course Harry with his Bane shield and Bane of the Dead trait. He lowers the undead leadership, can terror route them himself, and he prevents Invocation of Nahak, Reliquary Binding, and other heals besides Hunger from activating. That really cannot be overestimated, because healing is what makes the Vampire Count so strong. If their units aren't healing and are terror routing, they perform more like Skaven Slaves than something spooky from beyond the grave. His hammer can also explode blobs, so he's just about the perfect choice in this matchup. Besides that, he can add Aspiring Champions, an Exalted Hero of Corn on foot, to help deal with White Kings, which are also a common choice here. Double White King with Scab Scab is very cheap and very powerful, but Harry and a Corn hero should be able to handle that. And Festus brings the whole package together. They're already denying the Mortis play, but Festus is a Mortis himself with Harbinger of Pestilence. He can heal his own blob with Overcast Fleshy Abundance while blasting skeletons with Stream of Corruption. If and when more healing is required, just swap on over to Healing Elixirs and you've got that tool as well. Finally, the Severed Claw of Zinch. Elite Champion Halberds help shore up the bonus for large elements they'd otherwise be lacking to ward off Blood Knights, Crypt Horrors, and Double Vargulf if those happen to make an appearance, and the Mirror Guard of Sinesh are immune to psychology because of their mark. So of course, I do need to point out that while this army looks very powerful on paper, battles aren't won theoretically, they're won in practice, so still needed to see if it performs anywhere near as good as it might seem with the eye test. It was a really well thought out build though. So at the start of the game, I was wondering how to crack this nut and the first thing getting cracked are my skeletons. Blown up by Harry the Hammer and his powerful wave clear ability. I can deal upwards of 5,000 damage. Really great way to clear out the chaff and it's one of the important things you want as the Warriors of Chaos because when those undead are piling into the blob, you can really get some nasty ones off at the start of a match. Strike a pose, young fella. Now, do not sleep on the strength of four Crypt Horrors and Blood Knights Hammer and Aveling from behind. It has killed countless Chaos armies since 2016, and probably some on tabletop as well before. Now, normally, besides the Crypt Daddies, you either want to go heavy on the Blood Knights or invest in a Mortis engine, but I'm here to tell you right now that a Mortis is a dangerous game to play against Harry the Hammer because he strips away that undead trait, meaning the Reliquary Binding heal will not work if he is nearby. When Mortis engines can't heal, they are losing half their effectiveness in a blob fight, so I think there are better choices, and in this case, I just decided to forgo it entirely. If, for some reason, you know your opponent is not bringing Harry the Hammer, Mortis engine is 100% to play against Chaos. A lot of the time, it is very difficult for them to take that thing down because they don't have long-range shooting. One of the big questions for the Vampire Counts here is how to deal with double Chaos Giant when they're being supported by Festus, who will be Harbinger of Pestilencing everything around him and can cast those overcast Fleshy Abundances if the Giants start getting low. If I remember correctly, Fleshy Abundance does not have a cap on the number of units it can hit either, so if they blob up real gross-like, you can hit every single unit in your army with that heal. So a lot of the time, you don't need to switch over to Healing Elixirs with Festus at all. The Mortis Strain is more impactful and when you're combining that with the LD morale debuff for all these skeletons and zombies we've already seen are terror routing off that front line, it also makes things difficult for the Blood Knights to come in from behind because the front line isn't really engaging in the way you'd like to. They're not really pinning things down in place all that much. A lot of those units, a lot of the chaff, the fodder, is routing off the front line immediately on contact 
and isn't providing the anvil that Blood Knight hammers would typically like to enjoy. Blood Knights are screaming in from the flank right now, running over the Marauders. They just cast an Invocation of Nahek in the middle of everything, but all the units close to Harry the Hammer are not going to get healed by that spell, so the Overcast isn't going to be particularly effective. And I will say, with the Blood Knights, double or triple of those bad boys can absolutely deal with Chaos Giants, but they have to get through the other units first, and that's why the Marauders are even brought. They're just there to tar pit and block up charges. That's why you might see the double Fat Bat Vargulfs and double White Kings in the same build to try and chunk through all the characters and single entities, because killing Festus Leech Lord is probably top priority for the armies of the Vampire Counts. Good thing with Vargulfs is they can push through a lot of infantry and outduel characters. They benefit from the hunger, so their heals will still work, and they already cause terror, so they can't be terrified, can't be affected by Harry in that manner. But they do have low base leadership, and if they happen to start crumbling after a couple of nasty giant punches, you will need to spend precious time pulling them away from the scrum to nahek them, by which point they may already be debilitated. Big time fleshy abundance, upgraded cast on the Chaos Giants and the Severed Claw Zinch Halberds over there on the left flank. There are throwing axes, those were brought just in case of a Mortis Engine, but I don't think you need to go overboard with two or three or even four of those in a Chaos Army, especially not with a build like this one. Just having the ones to help ward off Blood Knights or any single entity, just toss them some axes, get some good AP value in there don't need to spend too much on dealing with the Skirmish Cav. You guys saw it for the first time a couple days ago when we debuted Harry the Hammer as the free LC, and I mean, every single time these Vampire Count infantry get close to him, they are running. They are showing the cowardice of Skaven slaves right now, and I, I mean, honestly, just from a mechanic standpoint, I think it's hilarious. Seeing a character that hard counters the undead in this manner is pretty crazy to watch, and they are quickly running out of bodies to send into the meat grinder. That Harbinger of Pestilence debuff from Festus, draining the life of everything in a large AoE, the healing from the Unholy Lodestone, not doing a whole lot here, so you might want to go maybe double Corpse Cart just for the leadership buffs and not go for the Unholy Lodestone at all because you just can't rely on healing against Harry. But then again, I brought it because I was hoping that it would be a more spread out battle and I'd at least benefit from healing on at least one of my flanks. But with an army like this one, a disgusting blob build like this one, everything is concentrated in one powerful fist that's just punching through the center of the Vampire Count's formation. Blood Knights are doing what they can. Just got a great hammer and anvil off into the mirror guard and are warding off the Marauder Cavalry. But the undead just can't stay in the fight. Every time they get near Harry, they become afraid, they become terrified, they break off, and that leaves the Crypt Horrors isolated, and that's where they really start performing a lot worse, is when they can't rely on their healing, as much anyway, and they don't have chaff in front, so they're absorbing all the hits from these elite Chaos Warriors, the Knights of the Severed Claw Halberds, the Double Chaos Giant, which have been mostly untouched this battle, the Blood Knights haven't really wanted to go in and fight them because they're really close to Harry, they're really close to Festus, they're really close to all the most powerful troops. And the Severed Claws, each Halberds, are maybe being a bit overlooked here, but when you think about what they're doing now that the fodder's now not out in front, the skeletons, the zombies aren't performing the way they normally would, I mean, those elite Halberds have free reign to chunk into both Blood Knights and Crypt Horrors any time they commit, and that means big time value. So a Blood Knight unit would beat a Chaos Giant if they were just fighting alone. They get the full surround off, six or seven models are all chunking in with their bonus large uh, lances. That Chaos Giant may not drop super quickly, but the Blood Knights would fairly easily win that fight. They can't go in against double Chaos Giant though, because the Giants will cover for each other's weaknesses, prevent that surround, and all the while, the Knights of Severed Claw are hanging out at the feet, the base of those giants, and using their bonus for large halberds to chunk in too, and it's just too much, it's way too much for the Vampire Counts right now, and this is honestly what I wanted to see. This is how you test out new builds and strategies, you figure out what makes a new unit or addition to a faction strong, and then once you see the power of it and what it does to counter the normal Vampire Counts play, well then maybe, perhaps, we'll be inspired to come up with some new ideas to take on the new meta for the Warriors of Chaos in this matchup. 
I don't know though. It might be hard to counter Harry. He is just so inherently good against everything the undead do that he may very well change this matchup forever, at least until the vampire counts get their next power creep DLC. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Harry, Harry is not gonna be seeing tons of play in other matchups, but against the vampire counts, he is a game changer, I really do believe. And that makes sense when you look at his design and his lore. So looking at everything that occurred in this one as the Blood Knights run down the Marauders, we're gonna try to isolate what we can, but Hadrian's is not gonna allow any of his Chaos Shines to break off from the pack to allow the Blood Knights to prey upon them. This battle is over. I'm thinking on paper, probably the best idea here for the Vampire Counts is go double Vargulf and double White King and just try to kill off Festus or get a snipe on one of the powerful single entities. Red Duke is gonna take on Harry. This is just for fun, for a little spectacle. Said, hey, might as well get a fun little duel in. Von Hall's Dots Macabre and El Safe going down. Red Duke should be able to beat him in a duel. Mano a mano, no problem at all. But the One Knights will get a rear charge into the Chaos Giants and Knights of the Severed Claw. And no point cycle charging because this battle is terminato. It's over. The only thing I can really think of is just try to go super heavy on the mobility. Like I said, either with the double Vargulfs or maybe like triple Blood Knight and then just cycle charge out the ass. Do it as much as you possibly can. Oh my god, dude. The Red Duke just terror routed against Harry. The Red Duke terror routed. That is mostly due to army losses there, but <laughs> that is pretty hilarious. So yeah, I, I think there are some ideas here that Vampire Counts players will have to mess around with before they really come up with a legit counter to a disgusting blob build like Harry and Festus. But yeah, I mean, against a player of Hadri's caliber, remember, this is Hadri's playing them, right? Like, not everybody is going to be as effective in a scenario like this one. He's a really good player, but still. I think he is showcasing exactly why Harry is so strong against the undead and how a double chaos giant build with Festus and Harry can really kind of cover most of the weaknesses that the Words of Chaos used to have against the vampire counts. Now, in a more spread out battle, I still think Blood Knights are going to be able to prey on a lot of troops on the chaos side, and I still think that the vampire counts they shouldn't feel hopeless in this matchup or anything. At least not yet anyway. It's way too early for that. But man, it's tough to deal with. And uh, great showing from Harry. My army just did not do a whole lot in this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.